Hey guys, welcome to the Troche House knitting episode. So I'm going to do more of a proper knitting episode where I basically share what I'm knitting, what I'm spinning, and just like real talk chat. So I'm basically going to share kind of what I've currently been working on and then some like whips, so work in progress, and then some like finished objects from the past. Um, and just talk about some like feeling stuff. So Mother's Day was Sunday and it was my first Mother's Day without my mother-in-law who taught me how to knit, who's mother, who's Andre's mom. And yeah, it was really hard. She taught me how to cook, how to bake German, like I knew how to cook beforehand, but how to like cook German food, how to bake. German food, how to knit, which was a lifelong dream of mine. I remember as a kid looking at those like beautiful feral sweaters and thinking I would, I would love to be able to make that. Like it's something that I, I aspired to, right? And just thought it was something I could never, could never do. And when she taught me how to knit, she's like, oh, it's just variations of knit and pearl. You can do that. <laughs> And she was so casual and nonchalant about it. Um, her name is Gabby. It just blew me away. And she taught me and I just like took it and ran um, till pretty much by the end of like her life. I was knitting better than she was for some things like color work she could never do. Um, cables without a cable needles, stuff like that. So I'm going to share a couple of things that are like really touched my heart in memory of her um, and just honoring her because I miss her a fucking lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So I'm going to share first what I've been working on. And the reason why I'm kind of having all the feelings is because she passed in October of last year and she died of leukemia and it was super out of nowhere. Um, and Andre and I basically stopped our whole lives and took care of her. Um, for like those three, four months. And it was a lot. And you know what? I do it. I do it again in a heartbeat. I do it again in a heartbeat. Those months were amazing. We would watch movies together and knit, I'd knit and spin and she'd, we'd play cards and she'd kick my ass. <laughs> oh, well, Andre and his mom would kick my ass because they're super good. But it was just, it was a good time. And so I haven't been knitting at all for months just because I lost my mojo completely, guys. It was gone. Um, so it's been a journey for me to even want to go back to knitting. And it's something that I love ferociously. Like it is a daily ritual practice for me. I make something daily. I work on creating daily. It's just part of who I am. Um, and for me not to do that is almost sacrilegious. It's just, it's, it just, yeah, it's a lot. So, you know, I have this huge stash. <laughs> That's overwhelming and flowing everywhere um, that I just haven't touched until recently. And it's been pretty nice to finally kind of get back into my knitting. And I have a lot of like untouched sweaters and garments and socks and shawls and beautiful stuff that I've been making that I haven't worked on. So I will share what I have been working on um, just to share with all of you guys. And so this one project, I really love it's kind of definitely like a zero to hero project um, fiber to finish object so this is the shifty sweater uh, by Andrea Maori and I'll show a picture of the finished object like what it's supposed to look like and this is made out of my, actually my own hand spun and I'm really proud of this so far so I basically, well, I'll just hold up a sleeve. Um, it's two colors. It's this background. It's like the whole colors. I don't know what's wrong. It's purple and green. <laughs> uh, and it's this background is this purple um, and some flecks of white. It was like four braids that I kind of like pooled color combo spin together and then the front color 
um, foreground color is this green and gold. Um, I'll show you in the cake too. So you can see this is a green. It's got green, gold. Um, yeah, it's just like heathered greens. And then the purple, I have the other skein that's not wound up. It's just gorgeous. Like it's actually really blowing out a little bit. Um, I'm almost done with one ball. And this one was like 664 yards or so. So yeah, this is all hand spun by me on my wheel. And I bought both of these batches of fiber from my local um, fiber shop, local to me-ish in Wasilla. It's about an hour's drive away. Um, fiber and ice in Wasilla. Um, and this is a British blend. It's a blue face Leicester blend. So it's super like bouncy and it's got a lot of like luster to it. And then this one, I think it's the same. I can't find the, oh yeah, I do. <laughs> Farm wool. So, okay, so this means that <laughs> I really should color. I should combo, I should combo. I should write better notes. If you think of the background in science, I'd be better with notes. Nope, I'm not. Um, farm wool, so this is from, there's a Facebook group. Um, her name's Arlene, I forget the name of it. She basically has a, a flock of sheep and they're bl uh, blue face luster, It's a farm wool blend. <laughs> Dang, that's bad. It's a couple different blends. Um, probably Merino, probably Blueface Luster, probably Targi, something like that. So it's super springy and super bouncy. Um, and they, they work really well together. They're great. So this one is my Shifty. If anybody's never seen this before, this is the designer herself. And she picked, obviously, totally different colors than me. But it's meant to be this, like, super cropped, like adorably cute sweater and I think mine's gonna be too big I'm really sad about it the thing with like knitted sweaters is they need to be knit like a size smaller because they relax um, and I think this one's gonna be too big on me it's already like like it stretches yeah it might be too big but you know what? It'll be okay. It'll be more of a relaxed fit. And I'm still going to make it kind of cropped. So like high-waisted pants. It'll still be really cute. Um, but I'm like, I already split, I already um, split. I'm sorry. What's this called again? <laughs> wow, guys. Bound off the stitches. Well, I didn't bind off. I separated for the sleeves. And I'm just working on the body. So I'm round and round I go for the body. Um... I'm only like, I don't know, six, six-ish inches from the underarms. So I maybe need like 10 more inches to go. And then this will be finished. Well, the body will be finished. And then I'm probably just going to do like bracelet length sleeves, like just like that. Um, and that'll be done. And this I've had on... <clears throat> Gosh, I've been working on this for like a year. And like I said, I haven't picked it up because of everything that's been going on. So this one I'm like, I'm just loving. It's really easy. This is a um, slip stitch mosaic design. I haven't done much slip stitch. I don't know what's wrong with my hair. It's all relaxing. It's doing weird things. Hmm. And... So you basically, you never knit with two colors. You only knit with one color and then you change colors every other round. So you basically only knit like half the stitches most of the time. So it kind of flies when I actually knit and I knit really fast. So it's kind of bumming me out that these are things are taking so long, but I also know why, like we've had a lot of death in the family this past year, like not just Gabby. But that was probably the hardest one because she taught me a lot of things um, and I just wasn't, she was like my second mom. I wasn't ready for her to go. So 
Here's this. I'm really excited to wear this one when it's done. I think it's gonna be adorable. Um, I love the colors. I probably knit this again in more of like a tighter version so it can like stretch a little bit. So I probably need to go down like two sizes, I think. I think I've lost weight in between. I don't know. Um, but yeah, the Shifty by Andrea Maury. I really like this one. And it's funny. I feel like with... Let me set these down. Come back over here. With all of the... So we didn't just have... So this is like real talk, guys. We didn't just have my mother-in-law die. We had our pets die. We had our boy die. We had Ryoga, who is our 12-year-old pit bull boxer. He died back in January. And our bunny, Cadbury, died. We rescued him from a farm in Wasilla. <laughs> he was 10 bucks. He's adorable. And he was this, like, tank. He was, like, two feet long. Um, and he, like, played with our dogs. He was the best bunny ever. And he died just really sadly. Um, and so we lost them. And then my both of my grandparents on my dad's side died. Um, so it was just a lot. And with having both of our pets die too, that was just not expected. So I think what I'm trying to say, I guess, is like making and creating something I've been really sitting with is like, it's really meant to be rejuvenating, right? It's meant to be something that's, that really fills our cup and like rejuvenates us when we're feeling down and tired and when we don't want to do anything else. It's like the thing that like brings us back to life. And what do you do when you don't even have that? And I've been really sitting with that. Like, sometimes you just don't have anything that pushes you forward. Not to sound really morbid, but when things get really hard like that, you know, we had just like loss after loss after loss. And it just was like a lot. Um, so it just makes you reevaluate, like... <laughs> what are you doing with your life? Who are you? Why are you here? Right. Um, and I noticed too, it was interesting because I would try to gravitate towards some of my really simple projects, like just stockinette stitch. So just like plain knitting. And I, that just wasn't enough. My mind would just go to totally different places and I'd get up and like clean the kitchen or like do something else. And I wouldn't just sit and enjoy. And so I've been gravitating towards stuff that requires my attention. So like the mosaic is part of it. And then the other one that I really pick up and I'll just do like two or three rows and it's really just labor of love lit knitting is my color work sweater. And this one is definitely going to take me a few more years because I had started this two years ago and I just am not consistent with putting time in on this. And I think my gauge has changed. So I'm, I'm like a little worried that it's going to get like tighter as I go up, but it'll be okay. I'll block it out. Um, it's this Shetland Rose cardigan. It's from Knit Picks. And so this is a cardigan that you knit in a round. And then you cut it up the middle right there. Just like that. Kind of scary. But once you've done one of the steep, once you've cut your knitting before, it, it's actually quite liberating. So that's the body. This is like the body part up until the underarms. Um, and I picked orange and like navy blue. I don't know if you guys can see. And I quite love this a lot. Like these are totally my jam. I'm an orange fiend. And the navy blue is just like a nice compliment. And this is just like a nice like kind of like blue tone gray. So I'll pick up, I'll pick this up. And I can, so when I do color work, I knit with both fingers. So I taught myself, so Gabby taught me continental knitting. So I knit with my left hand and I basically pick, right? Pick into my left hand. So, and I used to hold both, hold on. I used to hold both yarns in my left hand. And so I'd wrap them like this. So I'd wrap them like that. Okay, so they're both on my left finger. And I would, excuse me, pick from my left like that. Or I pick from the gray. Now the problem with doing it this way, where I have them both on my left hand, and then I would just do it like this, like normal, is my tension would be off 
depending on how the yarn was coming over and under. I didn't like that. Like, if there's one thing that Gabby taught me, it was tension. <laughs> She's also, she was German. She is German. Um, and Andre's German, obviously. So precise precision, not perfection, but like accuracy, precision, neatness is like celebrated. Um, it's a shoot, you shoot for that. And so she's always on me about like gauge and making sure things are clean and like making sure your stitches look good. And so it just drove me batty because she like trained that into me. So I learned how to knit with two hands, which let me tell you, if you're a continental knitter and you're knitting with your right hand, it is very hard like to learn the other style of knitting and so now it's much easy so i can like flick back and forth and just go um and i don't actually i don't slow down at all it's kind of interesting like, i knit pretty much just as fast as i would knit stockinette with two fingers for color work so this should fly if i put time on it um i just haven't put as much and i'll show you a picture of what it looks like completed um this is a picture of the main cardigan. And so you can see like at the bottom here, she's got the ribbing right there that you saw. And then where the buttons are, that's kind of where I'm gonna cut up open and then add the button bands knit on the butt band and then I'll add on the sleeves and you knit the sleeves separately I'm pretty sure if I remember right and then you sew them yeah so this one has the most steaks that I've ever done so you you have a steak for the center you have a steak for the armhole so wherever there's an armhole there the armhole here you cast on stitches and then you have the steak so this is a steak. So you basically have that here and then you cut that open and then you sew that to your sleeve. Um, and then you get it to your, your armhole. I'm sorry, your neck hole. And then you're just gonna sew your sleeves on and then finish, do all the finishing stuff. And that's just, that for something like this, that takes a while because you got to, you know, basically cover everything up and weave everything in. But I have been very good. I don't know if you guys can see the inside of my work. I've been weaving in as I go, which I will tell you is annoying as hell, but it's um, like, I basically, so let me see, right about there-ish is when I pick up my color changeover and I carry it and weave it in and then drop the old color and then weave or uh, knit with a new color. And so that's why you have all these tails, but these ones I can just snip as close to the fabric as I want. So when I'm done with the body, I don't have to worry about weaving in all these hundreds of fucking tails because dear Lord, no, that would be a nightmare. It's, so it takes like an extra five, 10 seconds a row to like weave that in. I'd rather do that now than do that later. That would just drive me crazy. So yeah, this is my Shetland Corose cardigan and I'm really loving this. Um, so these are kind of the two projects that are really like filling my soul right now. And I would love to, I would kind of wish I would be able to finish this when Gabby was alive so she could see it on me. <laughs> she saw lots of stuff that I made for, I'll show you something I made for her that I was, I'm very proud of. And I wish we had the Renaissance Fair happening so I could wear it because I'm like, I love it. Um, but yeah. This, this one I'm really, I'm really excited for. If I was any sort of ambitious, which I'm not with my knitting anymore, I've decided to let go of any sort of pressure. I used to be very pressure filled. I used to, like, me and some of my knit friends, we used to do like challenges or like, what are you knitting now? Or like pushing ourselves to finish stuff or I'm just so done with that. It's just like, for me, just really about like nourishing my soul now <laughs> because I need it the most. So this is my Shetland Rose cardigan. And I just, I'm really proud of this and I love it a lot. But this is also, I didn't say it, this is on Knit Picks Palette Yarn um, fingering. So this is like two millimeter needles. Like these are tiny, tiny, I'm sorry, three millimeter needles. Like that makes such a difference, but 
it just it's gonna take me a while so I'm really proud of that one um, another project that I haven't picked up lately but I want to mention since we're talking about feelings and grief and all a bunch of stuff is this um, now aside from all the people that died this year my Lola passed away like three years ago and so my Lola means grandmother grandma in um, Filipino um, and she was like the light of my life that woman um, she's amazing she died at 96 and I was able to care for her as well at the end of her life for like three weeks didn't sleep for like three weeks we did like 24 7 shifts it was crazy and again I would take I would do it over in a heartbeat I think caring for your elders like that caring for your loved ones caring for your friends caring for your family caring for people that like in that way is something you yeah you gotta love on your people guys you gotta love on your people so I started this as like basically a grief project and then I tucked it away because it was a grief project. So I'm kind of like showing it so that I will talk about it so that I'll knit it. Um, because I, I started this to work through the grief and it's basically this beautiful big wrap shawl. Um, and it's all knit out of fisherman's ribs. So I'm afraid I'm going to lose my, that's okay. So it starts with, so let me just see. This is like the top and this is the bottom. So I don't know, almost three feet, two and a half, three feet. It's supposed to be like one of those big shawls that you can like wrap around your shoulders and like whisk away, you know, I envisioned myself like wrapping myself around it in the airport when I was crying and it could be like a blanket slash a shawl, right? When I'm cold. And it's going to be basically that. So these are the colors. I basically kind of just like blended the colors as I went. This is just like a honey brown with a gray, which is like a super soft. So I think this is like a super soft cashmere mohair. Like I just went all out. Um, and it goes into this blue. There's a big patch of blue. And then there's some more of this like super fast, soft, fuzzy. Oh, this is like silk mohair. Gosh, I don't know. But this is held with like, I think five strands together. So I was just trying to use up some of this really fine yarn that I knew. I wasn't gonna get to you. So there's that. And then I'm at this color, which is really funky and I don't know if I like it, but I, I mean for this project. And so this project, like, I mean, it's huge. I really like it though. I basically knit this while I was staying awake. So when I was in the Philippines with my Lola, um, my sister was there, my cousin Ruthie was there, um, my mom was there, Lots of my, most of my family was there, um, but like the middle, the grandkids, like my age, were the ones mostly doing a lot of the shift work with Lola. We wanted to because we have done a lot of um, caretaking so and caregiving. So like I've done a lot of in-home respite, in-home caregiving, total care, total assistance for people with disabilities. I did that a lot in college. That was like my work. Um, so I felt very familiar and very comfortable in doing that for her. Um, and my cousin's a nurse, so it was great. So we were like, we got this, no problem. And so I would take like the midnight shift to like 4 a.m or sometimes like the 3 a.m. shift to like 7 a.m. And like, guys, like we had like a schedule and we like marked it out um, and we would come and relieve each other. And then so the other person would go and lay on the bed. And it was this tiny room, probably like 10 by maybe 20 feet, like very small. And there was like a hospital bed in there. <sighs> it was really powerful. And like, so then you'd go sleep and you like put like earplugs in your ears and like just rest till it was your shift again. And like, then you'd wake, get woken up by your aunts who were like, eat the food. <laughs> They'd feed you like fried eggs and rice and be exhausted as hell. But you didn't matter because you're taking care of Lola, right? And so all of this is from when I was trying to stay awake, watching her, taking care of her. And so there's like special memories in this. And it like chokes me up a bit just thinking about how fucking hard that was like 
you know, people talk about like, I don't know. I, I have like such a different view on life, you know, when it comes to like taking care of people who are, who've died and who passed and having a servant's heart really like matters to me. If you're not ready to show up for your people, you know? So each, like, I think I knit most of this on the plane and then I did a lot of this, like most of this blue and, um, uh, yeah, most of this is like in in the room, middle of the night, heat of summer. Um, it's hot. I don't care. I was knitting. Like I had to do something to keep me awake, and I was focused, and I was like there with her, singing to her, talking to her. So, my goal is to finish this color. And I think I'm just doing. Oh, and this is a bakery bears color. I don't know if anybody's familiar with them, they have a knitting channel. Um, my goal is just to finish this off and I think I'll be done because like I could pretty much like, yeah, I could wrap this around myself at least once. Um, and then just use it as like a throw when I travel or whatever. And then it'll always remind me of her. So yeah, that's kind of like my, my Bola, my Bola wrap. Um, yeah. It's just like huge and it's like super fluffy, but this is all fisherman's rib. So I use kind of, I forgot to say, I used a basically fisherman's rib, which is like knit one below pearl or knit one below knit, something like that. And then I did basically I cord edging on the side so it wouldn't roll. And there was times where I forgot in the middle of the night, like I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> um, but it's really nice because it's just, it basically finished just the way it is. And I don't have to do any other finishing work to it. I don't have to add a border or anything to it. So that's, that's done. So the last thing I was going to show today in honor of mothers, my second mother is something I gave to Gabby back in February, I think the year before she passed. So it was supposed to be a birthday gift. So it was going to be her 70. First 70th birthday, 70th birthday. Um, something like that, but I knit her a cape and I should see if I can find the actual, um, uh, picture of it. But I saw this, I have, I have the magazine. So I, it's in, uh, interweave knits and I have a subscription for that magazine and I love it. Interweave knits got a new editor, gosh, about like five years ago. And she is inspired. The woman's inspired, like the way that she has the layout, the way that she puts together collections. It, every time I'm like, yep, I'm knitting this whole collection <laughs> every time. And so this one, when I saw it, I immediately knew this is Gabby's style. So this is like the finished product of what it looks like. And it's got eye cord edging around the face. You're supposed to add like leather clasps to it. And it's got this basically zigzag color work. So this is color work. And so I really wanted to do something that was like kind of show stopping for her and that she would really love. And I did it and I was really proud and she really loved it. And so this is the cape. I feel like I should put it on, but I don't know. Hold on. So it's like this. So she actually added these on. I had a um, jewel reusable clasp that I bought for her, but it didn't hold. It wasn't strong enough. So she actually knit eye cord, bought these buttons, sewed them on so she could add this on. And it's just a cape, so it has like a hood on top. I don't like the top on this, but I couldn't figure out how to seamlessly blend the pattern together. I was racking my brain trying to figure it out and I just couldn't fucking do it and it was bothering me. So I just followed the pattern. I don't like it, but it's fine. <laughs> um, and this is a cape and it's pretty darn big. Like it's a cape guys. It's like a 90 inch, 90 inches circumference at the bottom. And this I had to steak. So um, all of this 
you can see on the inside, I cut. So these edges that you see here that were, gosh, I should really put this on. I'm just gonna put it on because it'll make her happy. It makes me happy. Okay, so the edges here. Oh my god, this cape is so gorgeous. I love it. Okay. I feel very like, hmm, you know? I don't know what that word is, but that's how I feel. So the edges here, this was knit in the round, so like in a, in a tube, right? And this edging was after. So these are together and I had to cut this open just like on that other color work. And so you can see the inside all here of where I cut that. And so this is like, you know, gosh, like four feet of cutting this fabric. I'll sit up. You know, it's just like, oh my gosh. Right? And I remember the first time I cut into it, I was like freaking out. I have it on video and I showed it to her because I wanted to record my reaction of me cutting my knitting. Because it was one of the first times I had really cut a major project and I had freaked the hell out. Cause I'm like, cause you're cutting your knitting. That is something you're like, you don't put, you don't put knitting with scissors. It's just not a thing. Apparently you do. So I did and it went fine. And I tacked this down and I had thought about putting like a, um, like a contrast ribbon on the inside, like a super pretty one. And I didn't cause I kind of like this like natural, I don't know, look to it. Um, but yeah, she loved it. She's so proud of it. <laughs> And what's crazy is that, like, when I knit this, I had so many fucking mistakes. <laughs> um, she, and I was so, I did not want to have a single mistake because I didn't want her to be like, ha, ah! you know, and she was always in good fun, but, you know, because she was actually the kind of person that's like, if you can cover it up, just cover it up. But in the beginning when she was teaching me, she didn't want me to, to just get used to that because sometimes it's better to just fix your mistake and move on. So there's a bunch here that like, I would just pour over it trying to like fix stuff um, so that she wouldn't find a flaw. But this is the Olivia's cape and this is the last thing I made for her. Um, and then a year later, yeah, she passed. And so it was kind of sad. I remember we were sitting on her bed. I was like laying with her, we were talking. And she asked me like, what are you gonna do with the knitting projects that you made for me? She's like, are you going to donate them? And I just was like offended. <laughs> I'll never forget. I was like, what? No, I'm going to keep them and treasure them forever because no, I'm not going to just donate these. Oh my gosh. Absolutely not. Um, I'm so proud of these things. And they remind me of her because she was so proud and she wore them proudly. Um, and I have another thing I'll show that was one of my first projects that I made and I made it for her and oh God, that was a problem. <laughs> but this one I'm, I was very proud of. This was like a, the biggest color work project I've ever made. This is worsted weight yarn. So it's and it's size nine needle. So it went by fast, but not fast enough because this sucker took me months to make. Um, yeah, it took me months, but yeah, this is, so not the Olivia's Cape, but the Gabby's Cape. And yeah, I miss her. So that's kind of all for me today. And I just wanted to bring all this up because it's kind of where my headspace has been at is just thinking about her and thinking about Lola and like how people in our lives who taught us how to craft. I mean, they don't have to be mothers. They can be anybody, you know, um, like the impact they leave on our lives. And what creating does for you like whatever it is whether it's knitting or spinning or sewing or woodworking or anything like it doesn't matter like i really believe that creating every day makes a huge difference for your soul for your mental health for a lot of everything so 
I love to hear how you guys move through kind of, you know, big energy like this when this happens, like grief and stuff like that, especially when you're not in the mood to knit. Um, I've been doing a lot of spinning, so I'll share more spinning next episode and some dyeing projects. I did a lot of dyeing. I'll share some of the dyeing that I did. Um, and just do some more whip stuff, so like pull Savata stash and share some of that and just like refresh my my projects a little bit. But I love to hear you guys and like share kind of what you guys have been doing, what you guys have been working on. But that's a little bit about me and my life and my feelings and all the things. So thanks for spending some time with me.